Imagine there's two agencies on high level trying to sell me AI in 2025. The first agency's website, which is yours, looks like this. Let's give it a quick look. And the second agency's website, which is your competition, looks like this. Let's give it a quick look. Now, which of these two companies would I choose to work with based on their website? The answer is very obvious to me. I'm going to show you why that is the case in this video. But before that, let me show you the winning website. don't have the time to build this from scratch but you still want this beautiful website for your agency you can click the first link in the description and get it in three clicks what i'm going to do in this video to break down how i built this website is walk you through six mistakes that i see on a lot of gho agency sites and then after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how i built some of these sections on high level the first mistake that i see on a lot of gho agency sites is that they have a bad first impression. I'm going to show you this website right here. And I'm claiming to sell AI, but if my website looks like this, it's just not positioning myself in a way that I'm going to relate or gain the trust of the prospect. In this case right here, you see that this captures my attention. It's simple, but it looks very professional as well. I've done a couple things on the hero section right here intentionally. First of all, I have this moving text right here, kind of like a cool wave effect. It makes it so the user wants to keep spending time on this website to read the rest of the text. And then this graphic right here is kind of popping from the bottom incentivizing the user to scroll this right here we saw in a lot of SaaS companies so for instance this one right here has the same graphic right here popping from the bottom and then the actual text we saw on this website right here so you see that it's a cool effect capturing the attention of the prospect. The second mistake that I see on a lot of GHO websites is that they don't speak to a specific avatar and they don't solve a specific problem for them. We go to this website right here. There's a lot of big words, bespoke AI powered solutions, blah, 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 blah. And it targets a lot of different businesses or avatars. In this case, it's small businesses enterprises and then realtors so they're not specific it kind of makes them look desperate because they're just trying to get whoever comes their way in this case i've made it so that the messaging is just talking to local businesses that might not be too tech savvy we say ai that handles your email marketing lead generation your scheduling so using simple terms now in the sub headline we're talking about dream outcome so save time cut costs and grow your local business as i scroll on my website right here i'm going to talk about the social proof in just one sec but the first thing that i present to my prospect is a problem i want to make sure that i can relate to them and talk specifically about their needs as soon as possible i'm describing the problem of how running a business can be overwhelming and then i go ahead and provide three bullet points right here what i see on a lot of gho agency websites is that as soon as they have this right here they jump straight into the features. At this point, a prospect doesn't need to know about all of the features. They care about the problems that they have. After I talk about their problem, I introduce the solution, submit agency AI, and in your case, it will be your actual AI. And then I present the solution right here, again, with language that the prospect understands. So AI that runs your business on autopilot. Kind of like what I had right here, I had a graphic that we created from scratch to complement this right here. We also have an animated graphic that shows how AI just booked a new appointment. And then after this section, we keep talking about the different features, but instead of focusing on the features, we talk about the actual solution. So the third mistake that I see on a lot of GHO websites is that they don't build trust or they have no social proof. When I look at this website right here, you see that the first thing that I am presented is companies that are already using this software. And in this case right here for AirOps is the same thing. They have the different companies right here. In my case, I've done the same thing right after the hero. The first thing that I show is that my SaaS is trusted by other local businesses. So I'm providing trust signals that are going to make it more likely that the prospect actually trusts me. In this case right here, you see that there's no sort of social proof, no reviews, no logos. Create kind of like a bias subconsciously that this is not legit and less likely for the prospect to take the next natural step. Now, in this case right here, I've added some testimonials and some actual outcomes. The next mistake that I see on a lot of GHO agency websites is that they have bad 
user experience or too much going on. Here you see that I don't even know where to focus my attention. The text is just too much. And then these shapes kind of like are distracting my attention as well. This nav bar has different colors, is very big, and it's just very distracting overall. When I scroll to a feature section right here, I don't even know where to look. And these buttons have colors that are just not easy to read, which again is going to hurt conversions and hurt the overall user experience. In this case, however, you see that how I built this website, I've tried to make it so the user only has to focus on one thing at a time and have visuals that they understand as well. Now, when I do present my features, I do it in this beautiful bento section right here. I can hover my mouse over each of the different images and they bounce. So incentivizing to kind of go through each section one at a time. For the actual buttons, I see a lot of GHO agency websites that have buttons that don't stand out. So that's going to make it for a bad user experience and decrease the conversion percentage as well. In my case, however, you see that the buttons that I use stand out and pop. Everything is very light, but the buttons definitely stand out in each section right here. The cool thing about the nav bar, it's floating. And then it's also like a cool frosted glass effect, like you see right here, making it so that not only looks good, but it's easy for a prospect to navigate the website. The next problem that I see on a lot of GHO agency websites is that they're overly complicated or they focus on the technicals too soon. The thing is, your prospects don't care. Workflows AI, conversations AI, reviews AI, they just care about how is it that this software or your services can solve their problems. So going back to this right here, how we present the solutions, making sure that we provide the dream outcome so respond to clients instantly, boost conversions by 30%, save time, cut cost, and even the headline right here, an AI that works for you 24 seven. We're not talking about AI agents, workflows, or any of that stuff to confuse them and overwhelm them. And even the way that we present these graphics right here, how a prospect would be interacted with GHO's AI agent in Conversations AI without telling them that it's Conversations AI, but focusing on the dream outcome. This website right here is the same thing. The language that they use is very easy to understand, get paid on time, e-sign documents, and so on. The last mistake that I see on a lot of GHO agency websites, which might be the case for your website, is that they look like they were built in 2010. The design is very boring, very generic, doesn't build any sort of trust at all. We're offering AI, which is cutting edge technology, but our website looks like it's stuck in the past. So just making sure that what you offer and how your website looks are in congruence. Now that I show you the six mistakes, I wanna go back to high level and show you how I actually built some of these sections. The main thing that you may notice is that on my website, the sections don't span the entire screen. They're kind of like in the center right here, the way that you can do this on your side is let's say that you add a new section like this. I'm going to start by adding a background. So let me go ahead and copy this background right here, paste it here just like this. But now you see that this section is spanning the entire width. What we did is we added margin. So I think we added 140 just like this. So you see 140 on this side. And then we did the same thing right here. What we did afterwards is that we added some round borders like you see right here. So I'm going to click on the section again, go to advanced, and then here I'm going to select full border. And then after full border, I'm going to make sure that this is set to one pixel. And for the actual stroke or the border color, I want to make sure that this is transparent. Then for the border radius, I think we did 25 or 50 pixels just like this. Now that I have this right here, let's say that I wanted to recreate this section. It's going to be a two column row like you see right here. So I'm going to click this right here select two column row. I'm going to add an image. So I'm just go ahead and add an image. And in this case, I would add a headline and then I would add three paragraphs like you see right here on the paragraphs. If I click on advanced right here, you see that I added some border as well. So that's kind of how we did so that they have this cool box around it. Instead of building this from scratch, if I already have a section fully built out, what I like to do is duplicate a lot of the elements. So what I would do is duplicate this headline and then bring it down here. If you're curious to see what fonts we use, I'm gonna click this right here. So you see that we use enter for headlines and then Nunito for the actual content. For some of the headlines right here, this font is outfit. So those are the three fonts that we use on this website. What I would do next is duplicate this right here and then bring it over like you see me doing right here. Now, something that you may notice as well is that I have this cool pill, it's kind of like this thing right here that says the solution and in this case, the problem to create this right here. If you were to have your margins, how they usually are zero like this, it would make it so that it spans the entire width of the container. So in this case, it would be my column. So to make them so that they're small, what you want to do is click on the sub headline and then for the borders or for the margin, make sure that you set it to auto. So in this case, I'm going to hit auto right this. 
and then auto just like this as well. And then in this case, it's in the center. If I want to make it so that it's left aligned, what I would do instead is make sure that this one is set to zero just like this. In this case, I did make it so that it's in the center, which is why the margin is auto on the left side and then auto on the right side as well. Now for the actual bento section right here, we saw a lot of cool bento sections like you see right here. Wanted to make it so that it was beautiful, but in our case, not have too much information. What we did is have three rows. So the first row was a one column row where we had the actual text. Then here we have a three column row. And then once you create one of these containers, you can duplicate them. So in this case, let's say that I want to have four. I could just duplicate them just like this. Change my text, change my image very easily. I want to delete this right here. And then the last one is a two column row. Of course, I can move this like this and add more style if I want as well. For the actual pricing, we kept very simple. We have a two column row. We had some cool effects. You see when I hover over this section, it kind of has like a cool glow effect, which I've shown in different videos. When I toggle between annual and monthly, the pricing plans right here change. So you see from 297 to 447. So again, two column row, and then we have a sub headline and then all of the different benefits right here. If I wanted to add a third to duplicate this right here. In this case, it's very, very tiny, but I would just go ahead and click this right here and then make sure that I adjust the width. So from 60, let's say to 80, just like you see right here. In this case, I'm gonna delete this right here again and then set this back to 65. Now the key to a good website is again, having great graphics like you see right here. We did all of this on Photoshop. So what I would recommend is that you build yours from scratch. If you use those generic ones that I see on a lot of GHO websites, it's just gonna make it so that it brings the overall quality of your website down. As you build your website, you wanna make sure that the color combination that you use works well with each other. The last thing that you wanna do is have a website with a bunch of colors that really don't work well with each other. So that is how I built this GHO AI website on high level. If you wanna get this exact website for your agency, but you don't don't want to spend countless hours learning how to code or building your own graphics what you can do is click the first link in the description and get access to this website in three clicks this six page website took us like four weeks to build and we will usually charge four to five thousand dollars but you can get it for just a fraction of the cost so click the first link in the description and get this website for your agency